I think to start to summarize the what seems to be the handing over, the most important thing is really is is not to tr try to hide and protect anything in particular. In other words, everything that is allowed to rise up into awareness, you know, will we'll pass through. Um, it's, it's the hiding and the protecting that, that literally slows down and it just kind of seems to short circuit the whole thing. In other words, the Holy Spirit, it's not like an active presence, it's like like a vacuum cleaner, just, just sucking up the darkness or whatever. It's more just like a, a soft light that every time you give permission for this darkness to arise toward that light, it just dissolves and disappears in a very easy way. So for me, I remember one time I was talking to the Spirit and I was, I had a lot of intensity and a lot of fear there, and I'd say, what's going on here? You know, what's going on in my mind? I said, what, what is it that I'm so afraid of? And the Spirit came back, you know, you're afraid of love. And I just, at the time, I just was like, I don't get that. I mean, I, I could think of many things I could be afraid of, but it, it just didn't really register. Afraid of love. So I had to kind of come at it from a different angle, and I said, okay, I don't get that at all. If, if, I'm, if I'm afraid of love, and I'm very, we'll say, defensive here, uh, and I'm very protective, what, what is it that I'm guarding, or what is it that I'm protecting? I don't get the afraid of love part, but maybe give it to me from another angle, maybe I'll get what it. Am I guilty of? Yeah, what am I guilty of? What am I hiding? What am I protecting? And the, and the Spirit said, well, it's this, it's this make-believe self-concept that you think you are, that you're guarding and protecting from the light. That's where the fear is coming in. You know, you feel like, you know, who you are will be, will just dissolve away, will, will disappear into this love, because the love is so powerful. So that was helpful, because then I started to just take note, anytime I seemed a little defensive, or irritated, annoyed, I would say, I'm, I'm obviously getting a bit defensive here. There's something I must be protecting that I don't want exposed. And that gives you an inroads into what we've been talking about. It's, it's your test to seek, you know, for the obstacles, for the interferences, for those, those blocks that are in the mind. And that's where you make the biggest headway you know, by discovering or uncovering the blocks that, you know, previously you were unaware of. They were just there, operating, but you weren't aware of what they were. So that's, that's the but how difference. do you get to that point, is, is to the protective, whatever it is you're protecting, like the cold sore and the lung cancer, how do you get from there to know that is truly uh, guilt of separation? I mean, there's a big gap there. Yeah. Experientially. Yeah, I started to go in that this morning about cause and effect. So, at some point when Jesus said, you know, this whole world is spurious cause and effect, I just started to, to take a close look at that. I mean, I'd been in university for ten years, and I'd studied all these different disciplines. And the more I honestly looked at, at these disciplines that I studied, I just thought, well, they've all got spurious cause and effect in them. I could see it very clearly. So it gave me a sense that there was a, I had to go much, much deeper to actually experientially feel that release and that detachment. And so, you know, whereas the course seems to be a, a course of study, I started to really emphasize the practice, the practical application of just contemplating, pondering, uh, instead of just thinking thoughts and, and just acting and reacting to those thoughts, I started to really question the thoughts when they would arise. And, we, you know, we mentioned like with the, the cold sore, the cancer, you know, these various aspects that come up, uh, you know, there are lots of things that arise in the course of the mind watching, 
and I would watch a lot of things come up and I would kind of run them through the same criteria of, you know, well, this seems to be upsetting me, this seems to upset me, this, 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 this. But I can be hurt by nothing but by thoughts and started to, you know, some people have asked me like, did you have any kind of technique or mental thing that you did? And I said, well, I actually at one point I did, I did take uh, a little series of Course in Miracles workbook lessons and kind of is like a little package uh, to really use in times of difficulty. And it was five, six, seven, eight. I'm never upset for the reason I think. I'm upset because I see something that is not there. I see only the past. My mind is preoccupied with past thoughts. Five, six, seven, eight. Here I go, I'm wound up, I'm caught up in some emotion. Could be anything, could be cancer, cold sore, could be temperature, could be, uh, it could be just anything when I'm noticing my, I'm not at peace and then actually going in and working five, six, seven, eight as a way of retraining my mind, you know, to start to see that I really am never upset for the reason I think. Because I think that I'm upset because of an external reason and it's just not the case. Jesus has told me it's just not the case, but, but it takes the actual practice of washing away, doing that mind training when that depression comes up or that jealousy comes up or that envy, that anger, that irritation, you know, it's like, whoa, slow down here. It's not a matter of getting something done or, or fighting or fighting my way through, it's more of, I need to retranslate whatever I'm perceiving here, in the moment. In the moment. Okay. So, for example, I would be guided to go to the store or get to the library to get a particular piece of music. And I put the music on, at some point in the music, I, the tears are coming, all these emotions are swelling. Okay, it's up. It's on the surface. It's not buried anymore. Okay, let's work with it here. You know, and then I would start working with the spirit you know, to really use it when the emotions were up. It's like when the storm is blowing, you know, it's like, okay, let's, this is the most practical time, let's, let's get in there and work on the forgiveness. I remember one time, was guided to go get this movie called Terms of Endearment. That's good. You know, Deborah Winger, Jack Nicholson, Shirley MacLaine. Yeah, what a roller coaster ride. What an emotional roller coaster ride. And then I sat there working almost individually on some of those emotions. Five, six, seven, eight, five, six, seven, eight. You know, the sadness, uh, the like laughing, laughing hysterically one minute and then deep sadness, a feeling of loss. I guess Deborah Winger was diagnosed in that movie. You know, it was, it was just a gamut of, of emotions that came up and I would have my inner tools to work with. You know, it's not the movie, I couldn't just say the movie was a sad movie. Or, you know, the, the movie disturbed me, I couldn't get off so easy with just saying that was a disturbing movie. Like sometimes people will say, or critics, you know, disturbing, not worth seeing, boring or whatever, as if the movie itself is boring or, or whatever. I couldn't get away with that anymore. I started to work those inner processes. And eventually that's how that booklet, that book that I have over there, The Movie Watcher's Guide to Enlightenment, came about because I was finding so many helpful movies for, for retraining my perception that I wanted to give it away. I wanted to give the insights away for movies so that people who were bored with their spiritual journey or they, they had a, a liking for movies but they didn't like to meditate, they didn't like to read or study, you know, it would be another inroad. To, uh, to successfully have their consciousness reinterpreted. And so it's very much an inner job.